Hey friends, welcome back. In this video, I want to continue with the topic of table view binding with combine. So as you can see, one day ago, I produced this video. I shared about how you can bind a table view cell with combine framework, and I didn't expect this to be a series. In fact, it was just me sharing what are the pitfalls to avoid. And one of the comments was like, hey, can you do this in MVVM? And I thought that, yeah, maybe I should because uh, I think many of uh, the uh, audience here want to learn to upgrade their skill sets. And in this video, I wrote it on the, uh, using the MVC architecture. So I decided to you know, challenge myself and convert this into an MVVM uh, ar architecture in a couple of hours. So I want to firstly highlight what is the uh, not so good thing about writing things in MVVM. So as you can see, I've uploaded, the, um, I've uploaded this project on GitHub. And uh, as you can see, this is the view controller. So if you have not watched the first video, uh, I leave a link somewhere at the top where you can check that out first. So if you see over here, this entire table view controller has about 98 lines, is about 98 lines long. And if you look at the uh, new MVVM architecture version, you'll notice that it's about double the length of, uh, of the MVC one. So one thing to note is that writing testable code does come with a cost, which is, you know, you get more lines of code because you're actually separating your logic into uh, different layers. Uh, but of course, one of the benefits of MV MVVM is that uh, your code is testable. And that is the reason why I, I make this uh, course, oh, not this one, I made this course part one of three. So now it's part two or three, and in the final uh, video, I probably uh, focus on writing unit tests, okay? So I wanna share with you how I converted into the MVVM architecture, and maybe uh, instead of coding, I'm just gonna run through um, my thought process, how I structure it, and how I do the binding between the view controller as well as the view model. All right, so if you have not watched the first video again, please, uh, I'll leave a link at the top. Go check that out first, otherwise you won't really uh, understand this. And as usual, I'll post uh, the source code, the MVVM architecture source code, uh, onto GitHub again, so you can reference this if you want to. All right, so just to give you a recap what the uh, app is about, this is simulating a e-commerce app, and we are on a uh, shopping screen with uh, various products. And over here, you can tap on the plus button to add the product to your cart. So for example, I want two pieces of PlayStation at $2 each. So if I tap it twice, I will see that there are two items in the cart and it costs uh, me a total of $4. And if I want to add a shirt, that would bring the cost up to $9. And we have three items right now and I'm able to uh, add a heart basically to light the item. And as you can see, currently uh, what is being light is the stroller. If I hit the PlayStation, uh, you notice that I have PlayStation and stroller inside this array. And finally, when I hit the reset button, I reset the entire card and uh, I reset the quantities as well as the heart, the light. All right, so let's get to the code right now. All right, so let's come to uh, the view controller first. So this is, uh, let's see, this is 68 lines long. So notice over here that we don't have any business logic, okay? So we don't have any if else, mostly. We don't have any if else. We don't have any switch cases. So uh, the beauty of uh, writing things in the MVVM architecture is that we move all the business logic into the view model, all right? And therefore the view model should be highly testable, okay? The view controller, as I've always mentioned, or the table view controller should be ideally as dumb as a UI view, all right? So basically it's just uh, reflecting uh, the properties uh, which are being sent from the uh, view model. All right, so let's talk about them over here. So over here, I have a couple of variables over here. So number of items in cart, the total cost, like product IDs, which is a set of integers. And this is basically the product ID. And we have the product quantities as well, or you can think of this as the cart. But this time I've simplified this. So the key is the product ID and the value is the uh, number of items of this particular product in the cart. And finally, we have the data source, which is this, uh, which is the product products, which is a, a array of product. And currently I've assigned this to be empty. So as you can see, when table view controller loads for the first time, everything by default is zero or empty, okay? 
And over here, we have an instance of the view model. So notice that uh, there's no dependency that's being passed into the view model. I think subsequently, I have to write one uh, because I'm, I'm trying to simulate. If I need to simulate how I'm fetching the products, I'll have to uh, probably add some dependencies inside, but that will be for the next video. And over here, I have an output over here. Okay, so this is interesting. So this is how I bind the uh, table view controller with the view model. So if you see over here, this output is the output of the table view controller. And what is the type? The type is the view model dot input. Okay, I'll come to that a bit later if you find that confusing. Okay, so let's come to view the load. So what happens is that we call the observe method the moment the view loads. And we are actually observing or rather binding for that two-way event, okay? So if you see over here, um, I am, uh, okay, so after observing, I'm sending an event to the output, okay? So over here in the observation, I'm getting the view model and I'm calling the transform method and I'm passing in an input, which is this guy over here. So what is the input from the view model? That is the output from of the view controller all right i know it's a bit of a tongue twister over here but uh this is how it is okay and then i'm going to call the same method and i'm going to get a bunch of events over here so these events uh, are the events that the view model is sending to the view controller so at this moment we have two events set product which is uh, basically fetching the list of products as well as updating the view and obviously we set all the different uh, properties over here and uh, we reload the table view, okay? And over here uh, on, the, uh, on the event of the reset button being tapped, we send this event to the view model to say that, hey, uh, the reset button is being tapped, do something. Okay, and finally, um, over here, what do we have? Uh, nothing much has really changed over here. We are setting the product. We are getting the quantity using this, uh, this dictionary as well as this a set of integers over here under the slide. Again, guys, if you are confused by this, go check out the first video so that it makes sense for you. And over here, notice that inside the uh, cell, when we observe the cell events, what we do is that we just send this to the view model and we allow the view model to handle. Okay, not everything else has not changed. Okay, so let's now go to the view model. I'm gonna scroll back up and maybe make this a bit bigger so that you can see. Okay, so. As you can see, uh, it's quite a little bit here. This has 88 lines. And let's start with the two enums that I've declared, okay? So I've declared two enums over here. One is called input, one is called output. So this input is basically whatever that the VC is sending to the view model. So you can think of this as the input coming into the view model, okay? So what do we expect to receive from the view controller? We expect to uh, know certain events, maybe even the, the view controller's lifecycle, for example, view the load. Because on view the load, we want to fetch the products and you know populate the table view, right? And over here, uh, we, we want to receive event when there is a uh, cell event that's happening. So for, for example, if the user taps the plus button or you know hitting the heart button, we want to receive that notification. So how are we doing that? We have uh, this, this uh, enum, has two things over here. It has the product cell event, which we declared uh, in the first video. So this event uh, is quantity did change as well as hard did tap. So I, I believe you're familiar with that as well as the product. So every time the user taps on this, we want to know exactly which product is um, experiencing that tap event, okay? And then finally, the last input is when the reset button, which is this guy over here, is being tapped on. All right, so there are three things that uh, the view controller will send to us, which are these three over here. So we declare that out very explicitly, okay? And finally, for the output, this is when the view model has done its calculation, its permutation, uh, making its API call whatsoever, and then sending those uh, uh, events back to the view controller. So what do we have over here? We set the products, okay? So basically, uh, we are sending the list of products. So you can think of this as, you know, maybe we're making an API call, uh, an, an async call, and then once we get the information, we'll send it to the view controller, all right? So we have set products. And we have also another one called update view. So for instance, uh, you know, when the user taps on the heart shape, we want to uh, maybe perform some kind of calculation and then let the view controller know that it's time to update the view, all right? 
So we send uh, the number of items in the cart, we send in the total cost, we send in what are the light products, uh, as well as the products, uh, the product quantities. Again, this in is the product ID, this, uh, the value over here is uh, the number of items of this particular product. Okay, so over here we have an output over here. So this output is this output here. So pass this, okay, so look over here. Let, private let output, okay? And if you come to the view controller, notice that there's also a private let output. But you notice that this event, sorry, this uh, object is actually the view model dot input. All right, I hope that it clears up right now. And for uh, and on the view model side is actually um, the output, which is the view model dot output. Okay, basically it's saying this view view model. Whoops. Same thing. Okay, let me just run this, and I believe it should compile as well. Okay, so now um, and over here we are holding the state of the card as well as the lights over here. So previously in MVC, these two properties are inside the uh, table view controller, but right now we have moved them into the uh, view model. Okay, so when the view model is being initialized, we call the observe method because we want to observe whenever card and lights change. Why? Because we want to print those uh, statements uh, those statements out. So if you remember, if I hit the plus button, I'm able to see the, hey, stroller one quantity. If I hit that again, stroller two quantity. If I get a monitor, I get a monitor one quantity, stroller two quantity, all right? So basically inside this observe method, let's jump to that. We're actually printing out the dictionary of the card, okay? So uh, inside this observe method, we are also listening to the lights dictionary. Again, uh, whenever we hit the uh, hard button, we are saying that, hey, monitor is being light, shirt is being light, stroller is being light over here, okay? So that's for the observe. Okay, so let's come to the transform method because this is a heavy one and I think this is the gist of the binding, okay? So if you see over here, what is the input? This input is a publisher, okay? And what is the output? The output is also a publisher. This input is the, let, let's, let's jump to the definition, is this guy over here, all right? And then the output, this output is this guy over here. All right, so what we, what we are saying is that when the view model calls this transform method, it has to pass us this publisher and we will return the output publisher, okay? So what we do is that um, when we receive this publisher from the view controller, we call the same method because we want to observe to see if uh, events are being uh, transmitted to the view model. And then so we do a switch Okay, so for example, view did load. So what we want to do over here, I try to simulate like, a, you know, making an API call. So we have a slight delay of 0.5 seconds and upon uh, that delay, I'm going to use the output to call the set products, uh, send, send the set products event. And what I, I have to pass in and, okay, actually this should be products, I think, set products. Should be like that. I think that that makes more sense. Okay, set products, products because it's an it's a plural. Okay, so I'm, I'm passing in uh, the collection, which is a bunch of, is which is an array of products. Okay, again, if you have watched the previous video, you'll understand this. And then once I send the product, basically I'm sending the data source to the table view controller, and then I'm telling the table view controller to update via this update view method. All right, sorry, this update view event. So if you see over here, uh, when the view controller receives this update view, it will have uh, known the number of items in cart, the total cost, the light products ID, as well as the product quantity. And how is it getting those data? Basically, since the view model has access to the cart and the lights, it's able to do its own permutation to get those uh, information. So let me just quickly show it to you. Okay, so for example, number of items in cart, over here, I check uh, the card uh, and basically I count all the items that we have over here. Again, um, I'm using the higher um, uh, order functions over here. Uh, over here, total cost. How am I getting the total cost? I believe I'm using reduce again to, mul to, uh, to multiply the items uh, with the price uh, at the quantity to get the total cost of the card itself. Okay, and the light products, I think uh, so and so forth. Basically, I'm filtering all the products 
which has the uh, value equals to true and then I'm, ma I'm mapping it to its ID. Again guys, if it's a bit confusing, it's okay just follow along because I'm going to put up the source code anyway and you can examine it uh, all you want, alright? And for the product quantities, again, uh, oh, this is an easy one. So I create a temp uh, uh, dictionary and I loop through everything. And then I uh, basically just set the uh, product ID with the, uh, the value, the, the number of quantities, okay? So this is easy to understand. So, okay, so view did load, this is going to be sent. So let's come to the view controller to see how uh, this information is being received, okay? So set products. So let's come to the view model, oh sorry, the, the table view controller, set products. Okay, so when set products is being fired, we see that we assign products into this self.products which is this guy over here, all right? So we assign that inside over here. And then what we need to do next is also to refresh the, or, or rather to reload the table view. And that happens inside this update view over here. So we set all these properties over here, we populate that. And then finally, we just uh, reload the table view. Okay, I hope that that's easy enough to understand. Okay, what else do we have? So on reset button, what do we do? We reset the card and the lights, which is these two guys over here. Okay, we remove all the elements inside and then uh, we just uh, call this uh, update views uh, event. We send this event. Again, it populates, it gets all these uh, params over here and uh, it reloads the table view. Okay, so over here, this is uh, on product cell event. So as we know that product uh, uh, cell event has two types. One is when the quantity change as well as when the heart was tapped. So let's see what happens over here. Okay, when the quantity change, we get the value of the product. And then we just update the card over here. And again, we just reload the table view and update those, um, those, uh, uh, those properties. Okay, when the heart was tapped, I think this is, uh, uh, this is familiar to you. I, I, I showed you this inside the view controller previously. And then again, we just, you know, just uh, update the table view again. And, um, we uh, store this into the cancelable so that this, uh, this observation stays in the life cycle of this view model, okay? So one thing to take note again is that, you know, you don't want to uh, introduce retain cycle. So whenever we're in a closure, it's better to use a weak self or an unknown self. Okay, uh, where is it? Over here, yeah. Okay, what else do we have next? Uh, observe, I've talked about it, or I've talked about it already. So uh, Getting the number of, uh, of items and card is quite self-explanatory. Total cost is self-explanatory self again. If you don't want to use the reduce method, you can manually just uh, do a for loop of the card and calculate those things manually, okay? Light products uh, is not too hard to understand. Uh, and the product quantities is also not too hard to understand as well. I think I've kind of, you know, covered everything over here already. And I think that would be uh, what's needed for this video to show you uh, that you know the MVVM architecture is a bit that there, there are definitely more lines because they're separating the logic into different layers, but uh, it's going to be a lot easier to test. And uh, I'll record the third video to show you how we can actually write unit tests for this. And I hope that this has been a nice example to show uh, table view binding. Actually, that was my intention, uh, but I think I'm, I'm moving into architecture and you know writing tests now, which I which is definitely important. All right, guys, that's all I have to share with you, and I hope that you benefited from this sharing. And uh, feel free to leave a comment to let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers and bye.